let us start with the ninth chapter our economic system now our economic system is basically dependent on three sectors they are primary sector secondary sector and you can say service sector now what is the primary sector it is a certain resources which is obtained directly from the nature and they are used by human beings for example cereals fruits and vegetables we obtain wood from forest and also medicinal plant gum etc and from animals we get milk meat bones and leather fish from the water and minerals beneath the earth surface so in short forest area agriculture area mining area animal husbandry fisheries etc provide raw materials to us for food commodities and industrially manufactured products so this sector is known as the primary sector now the second one is the secondary sector it is also known as the manufacturing sector now primary products which undergo certain process to form into finished goods those are known as the secondary sector now for example cotton clothes from cotton cotton seed oil jaggery and sugar from sugar cane bricks from soil now the machinery transport vehicles communication system electrical equipments ready made commodities are manufactured with the help of big industries so this unit which manufactures all these things is also known as manufacturing sector or you can also call it as the secondary sector the third or the tertiary sector is the service sector the manufactured products or goods have to be reached to various businessmen and for the required trucks or train so in order to maintain the relationship between goods and business there are a lot of connections to be kept in first is a telephone letters waterways education and health banking as well as insurance companies entertainment you name it all this is required and in the modern world we require internet atm booth call centers they also have become an important part of our life and it helps in the service sector now if you go to see our economic activities of india are classified on the basis of ownership now first one is owned by government so the industries which are owned by the government are run under the policies of government are the public sector industries for example bilai steel plant bharat heavy electric limited oil and natural gas commission etc and there are some economic activities which are owned by the private persons now those industries which are owned and run by the private owners such units are termed as the private sector units now for example tata iron and steel company limited reliance torret cadilla etc now sometimes there is mixed enterprises or unit that means joint sector there are certain limitations to public sector units so generally we find less dedication and commitment towards work in public sector units so in order to control this to collect good amount of required capital the experts of private sector units provide the assistance and thus with the objective the public private enterprises have been established the government has a greater hold on such units so it's a combination of working together with private and public together the last one is a cooperative sector which includes the cottage industries now there are many people in our country who are not very sound from economic point of view now they are condition of starting their own industry is very less so these people come together and make a group in a cooperative and they undertake the manufacturing and selling process now started with cooperation of a group of people are known as cooperative sector units for example milk dairy sugar mills etc now in order to make you understand the economic activities in organized and in unorganized sector they are given an example of kanta and kamila now here you can see kanta works in office she comes under organized sector 
her office timing is organized from 9:30 to 5:30 in the evening she gets her salary regularly of end of every month and apart from her salary she also gets different benefits and also pension plan now she receives medical allowance and other allowance also she gets holiday on sunday now her salary is also depending on her sundays there is also appointment letter for her job and rules and condition for the job is also provided so this is the structure of an organized sector now kamal who's neighbor he works on a daily wage in grocery shop he goes early morning at 8 and works till evening 9 o'clock he doesn't get any allowance except for his daily wages the day when he does not work he is not paid for the day he does not get any paid holiday he don't have an appointment letter his boss can tell him to leave the job at any point of time so this is the structure in an unorganized sector now what is economic liberalization the government has done certain changes in its economic policy so as to be with the world and its pace of progress and also to make india a developed nation so in accordance liberalization was accepted in the year 1991 now according to this policy certain control measures were removed from the industry's business and other small units the due dates were removed relaxation was announced on the import and export the process of getting permission to establish any industry was made simple as a result india has become one with the world in terms of business and industries and employment opportunities have increased next one is privatization so after independence the central government made courageous effort but the industries went into loss profits started decreasing so many public sector units became sick and they had to close down now it in, had an impact on economic system the workers became united but the industry suffered big loss on the other hand the worlds are talking about quality so many of the private industries started coming up and giving a better economic system so government thought of working jointly with the private sector so they got better profit and at the end they gave motivation to privatization so the government started moving from public to private sector now the joint effort is a part of the process of privatization now next one is globalization which means the world is becoming one or coming closer to each other now due to globalization any country of the world can do business and trade with another country now it is also that it was also the same for production the process of interpersonal relationship among various nations and the process of becoming one is globalization now the revolution of new innovative field of information technology stimulus behind the process of globalization the world trade organization which was established in 1995 is working in this direction Now what are the effects of globalization new employment opportunities have increased in the service sector due to information technology also it gave to much importance to revolutionary tools like phone fax mobile of information technology which gives more information at low cost and high speed now this has led to speed in economic development in our country now mnc's have put in joint efforts with the host countries it has led to profit for the host nation like the ford company manufactures car not only for india but for the other countries of the world also now the advantage is received by india similarly the big companies of india have established a position in foreign markets like tata motors infosys asian paints parle etc have gone to international level and the sales are done there too now the consumer started getting good commodities at low price due to competition which led all companies to produce good quality for example china has put its toys in indian markets at low price and attractive design now chinese toys are very popular in indian markets in year only the chinese toys have taken the place of indian toys in 70 to 80 percent shops now the toys of the indian markets are cheaper than before 
Why? Due to world trade. The Chinese toys came into Indian market. The Chinese toys proved were better in comparison to Indian toys. Indian businessmen and industries who produce toys have incurred losses. Similar to world trade, the cottage industries are also incurring big losses. So, in sum up, we saw that how the economic system is been affected, what are the different sectors which is involved in economic activity. There are three. One is the primary sector, secondary sector and the last is the tertiary or the service sector. Then we saw the ownership. First is the private ownership, second is the public ownership and third one is the joint sector, fourth one is the cooperative sector. We also went through what is liberalization, what is privatization and globalization and its effects. So this is the summary of what we learned in this chapter. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.